Hello, everyone. I'd just like to start by thanking everybody for being here. All of us have put a lot of hard work into our senior projects, and we're really happy to share them with you today. How many athletic training aids are in the United States? Do you know? There's 133, and I'm a part of those 133 students, and today I will discuss how I've spent the last three years over 900 hours and the entirety of the course of Senior SEM answering my own essential question. How does opportunity influence passion? Hello, my name is Jessica Saren Birnbaum, and this is my senior project. When exploring opportunities, you may find yourself in a situation or a place or doing a thing that deeply resonates within you. My research showed that passion is equal to the skills that you possess plus the activities that bring you joy. Where you pursue your passion is therefore completely unimportant, especially if your schedule and your hobbies don't line up. Have no fear. My project is an example of how you can find passion in an opportunity presented to you outside of the workplace or school. My project has been in the making for three years, which is more than most senior projects have been. And this is because this opportunity came to, my, came to me my freshman year. But to fully understand the extensity of my project, I'd like to introduce you to my mentors. I first started, as all freshmen do, in a best nine class learning CPR and first aid. This piqued my interest into healthcare, and I went to our athletic director, Mr. Mike Desolitz, and asked him if I could shadow our athletic trainer, which had never been done before, and a lot of people didn't even know that we had one, which brought me to our original athletic trainer, Ch Cliff Julata, retiring that year. I started my sophomore year with Kylie Fleming, who's pictured above me, and I learned how to tape, how to assess for concussions, and I learned everything that goes on inside these two bags. Inside here, a med kit, is anything that you could possibly need for an injury or assessment of any kind on the, on the field, on the court, or in a match. I learned these like the back of my hand to be best use to all of the athletic trainers that I would future work under. After Kylie left and moved on to work to a, in another college, I interned under Gage Boyle. I earned my first pair of scissors, which is what an athletic training aide gets when they deal with their first major injury. And I learned about emotional support and empathy and empathizing with patients even though you haven't dealt with those injuries yourself. After he left, I interned with Andrew Corrado, and I really dove deep into the legal things behind athletic training and how HIPAA applies. HIPAA rules prevent you from sharing information about patients or students that you're dealing with, and because I'm under 18, I can't sign a HIPAA document, which is what prevents a lot of people from working in hospitals at a young age. And trying to navigate around this, I learned a lot with him. After him, I interned with Reese Sapala, who was a short-lived six-week internship because she was going back to grad school for physical therapy. With her, I learned that you have to pursue your passions, even though, no matter how hard they get, and you should always continue to learn. And last, but certainly not least, our athletic trainer this year, Randall Scroggins, who has taught me the three major things about athletic training. Trusting, planning, and executing. You have to trust yourself and your own knowledge of athletic training if you're going to be dealing with patients that are hurt. You also have to plan. Everything that could possibly pl be planned, I planned. Nutrition plans, rehab plans, anything that could be planned, anything that goes in their inventory stocking, I planned all of it. And I learned how to do that because of him. And executing those two steps is what is most important about being an athletic trainer. Now, I have interned under six trainers at Bow and 10 at all in the last three years. And you may say to yourself, that's a lot of people to intern under. And doing this project made me realize that there is a national decline in athletic trainers in this country. And I realized that if an opportunity presented so gratefully to me and drove me to have this passion, I should pass it on, thus creating the inspiration for my project. In the last three years, you may have asked me, Jess, why do you do that? Why do you spend your time outside dealing with people who are probably really cranky and hurt or whiny or just in a lot of pain for free? You don't get paid. And to that, I say to you, I do get paid. I hope to help our community and inspire others to take opportunities that arise every single day. Payment comes to me in the form of success of this project. My program has a website and a handbook, the website with my story, which is longer than this 10 minute one that you're hearing right now. I have an Instagram account that I created to give updates about how my project is going and what I'm doing. 
I have a network of athletic trainers that I converse with regularly, and I'm so grateful for them, and I never thought that this would happen at such a young age. My program is nationally recognized by the National Athletic Trainers Association, and that is something that I also never thought would happen being so young. And I believe that I have raised awareness for the dec decline in athletic trainers and sparked curiosity in so many young minds. Obviously, this project was not a walk in the park, so I'd like to share the difficult parts so that you can also understand the struggle that I went through. The athletic training room, when I worked for the first two years, was messy, it was disorganized, and it was hard to navigate. So, I completely remade it. I spent over 85 hours this summer in the school while all of you were probably vacationing or in Aruba or playing sports. I was here, in this building, redoing what I knew was going to make so many people comfortable and happy. I figured out how to be in medicine under 18 and navigate all of the struggles that you have being under 18 and knowing that you want to help people and be in the medical field. I had physical struggles. Obviously, those are not light. Neither is the table that I had to carry from one side of the field to the other side of the field. Neither are the two water jugs that I used to carry on my back after every single game or holding tiny little water bottles by my side for when the football team would be just, I'm thirsty. I also had to deal with mental struggles. Obviously, seeing large injuries of your peers and people you know can be incredibly traumatic. So figuring out how to deal with that stress of helping all of you, but also helping myself. And my social platforms. I did not know how to create a website when I first started, and thanks to my dad, I now have a easily navigated website, and it's super impressive in my opinion. But it was all worth it for all of this. Family, friends, mentors, networks, jobs, support, knowledge, loss, struggle, respect, honor, leadership, service, pride, joy, empathy, and love. Every athlete, injury, rehab, joke, game, match, race, win, or loss, I have always been your biggest supporter, whether you've seen me on the sidelines or not. Most importantly, I have a handful of thank yous to give out. First, Mr. Mike Desolitz for the opportunity and trusting me with a program that was made from thin air. I have to thank the sports teams for trusting me and apologizing when their feet smelled, but I'm eternally grateful because I got to learn so much from all of you. For the coaches, Dr. Paul Cohen and the football team and all of the other fall sports teams for letting me ride along with you, win with you, lose with you, and get to know all of you. For Chip, for always being behind that camera lens and supporting every single athlete that we have. For the National Athletic Training Association and Amy Wiggins, the secondary school rep for New England, and helping me get this program implemented in six schools in New England. For John Stark, Bishop Girton, Pembroke, for letting me come and talk to your students about how this has impacted me and how other students can take an opportunity and it could turn into something as beautiful as this. For Granite State Physical Therapy and Concord Ortho for supplying the trainers that I learned from. My friends and family who are here now are listening in full support of me and for Bow High School and everybody in it. Thank you. I'd also like to thank our new sponsors of the program, Dr. Wilkening from New Hampshire Orthopedic Center and Mueller Athletic Training Company for supplying five boxes of, state, of tape and $500 so that our school doesn't have to go into their funds trying to supply tape for my project so that I can go to other schools and teach them. Thank you everyone for watching as the Jessica Saren Athletic Training Internship Program was created. Do you have any questions? Anybody else? So that was actually probably the hardest part of my entire project. I know that because you are under 18, you cannot sign a HIPAA document. And for those of you who don't know, a HIPAA document prevents you from spreading information about athletes.